Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you could see over that wall, yeah. you see products that don't yet exist. Really? Have you got many plans? Lot, really? Oh, amazing. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Norton HQ and factory. This is a really impressive unit. Uh, so I've just ridden this Commando about 70 miles here in absolute torrential rain. I could barely see anything and the road was practically a river. And as I got to the end of the ride, I think something is slightly wrong with the bike. Um, it's kind of lost power and then it would kind of get power again and then lose it again. So it was being a really jolty. I also thought that I was gonna to have to amputate my hands because they're all purple, but it's just the dye from the leather gloves. I couldn't feel my hands either, so I really did think I would frostbite or something. But I was just trying to start it up and see. It sounded like it was firing on one cylinder. Sounds all right now. Something's not quite right with it, but they're going to have a look at it. But let's have a look through the factory first. Norton have come back to me to let me know that it was an issue with the intake temperature sensor. Uh, this particular sensor's waterproof seal assembly from the supplier wasn't quite right. Uh, so with the excessive rain that we had on that day, uh, this didn't quite go to plan. So this has since been changed and the bike runs absolutely fine straight away. Uh, and if this was a customer's bike, it would have been fixed under warranty with no issues. We'll kind of skip passes because this is like yeah. almost the end of a, of a motorcycle's production story. Right, okay. So we'll kind of skip Come back to that. We'll come back to this. One. Yeah. Otherwise we're skipping ahead. Yes, yeah. This is stored, as you can see, yeah. and that is where everything that's, all the parts of the motorcycle are delivered, right. ready to be fitted to the bike. Okay. Um, the way it works, so you probably, uh, some really major manufacturers, like car volume manufacturers, yeah. do what's known as just in time. So that's where a part is like delivered and within 15 minutes it's fitted to the vehicle, that kind right. of thing. And that means they don't hold any store apart. Uh, okay. We don't do that kind of manufacturing. Yeah. These motorcycles have a build trolley. So there's a build trolley just there. And you get two types of build trolley. Yeah. So that's an engine. And that is a V4 engine waiting right, okay. to become a full V4 engine. Awesome. And then the other side of it, the ones where they got the bigger boxes, that is a full motorcycle build trolley. So if you went around right. there, you would see wheels, suspension components. Uh, okay everything that builds a motorcycle. Basically. Awesome. So these are all end of line bikes that have come off of the factory line. So these are all finished. Some of those are press bikes at the end. And then you've got this huge area with all the parts in. So there's a fair bit in stock, but uh, they sort of order in what they need for when they're building the bike. So, um, and they build them in batches. So they build the V4 for a certain amount of time and then the Commando. Um, but if you want to nick any Olin's forks, this is where you find them. Yeah. And they will design um, future product basically. Right, okay. um, and it's, it's visual design rather than like technical design. So engineering is still in the building, but they're over at the other end. Yeah. So this is looks yeah, of it. the design yeah. of the looks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I don't, yeah, I mean, if you could see over that wall, yeah. you'd see products that don't yet exist. Really? Have you got many plans? A lot. Really? A lot oh, amazing. That's it's exciting. exciting yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm excited. I really like these bikes. So, uh, what sort of things have you got planned? Can you tell me a little bit? <laughs> no? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's an exciting period for all. And over the next year, yeah. we're going to release plenty of new models. Awesome. Really cool. But yeah, so this is where design looks. Awesome. Nice. So, yeah, you can um, film in front of the. You can see a plant. Yeah. <laughs> It's a plant, a new Norton plant. Yeah. <laughs> no phones. Oh. At least we can film the rest of it. I was panicking. <laughs> the gap in the door. There's nothing immediately on the oh, other side. Right. Just going to see it. Um, oh, okay. These windows are, have got shade on them because it's obviously welding is uh, yeah. right yeah, at yeah. yeah. Might see some either lights in that window or if not. Have a look at this. Exciting. <laughs> oh yeah, here you go. So this is a commando frame being uh, welded. Oh, amazing. Seven. That's so cool. So, almost every single bit of the bike is made by here. It's a difficult thing to see through. Press the lens right away. Yeah, you can I, barely I see through that, can you? Can't even though it's, it's like a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Wouldn't, wouldn't it look really it. bright? If you, sh if you shade the lens against the... Like try a less camera, uh, get a photo. ...window, you can see... There we go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and this is the welcome area here. Oh, so okay. We can't go into health and safety, but... Yeah. Gosh. It's like a hospital, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So we do um, steel and, and aluminium welding here. Yeah. V4 frames, aluminium. Right, okay. And yeah, each, each bit like. has like each of there's different processes taking place. Like it gets done, the frame gets done in chunks. Yeah. And move to the next bay and the next bay and the next bay. What are the, what are the differences and costs of manufacturing in England to like India? It must be, a, I mean, because people always say, Oh, the Norton's 17 grand. I can't justify it. Yeah. I get a few of the comments have said that, but it's just trying to explain to people, well, manufacturing in England's a lot more expensive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yes. Uh, so I don't, we don't manufacture anything in India, so I don't yeah. know what the cost would be yeah. to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the simple fact of it is, it is expensive partly because we do it right here, yeah. but also a lot of, we take a, lot, a, a great deal of care over yeah. our motorcycles. Yeah. Um, it is a time consuming process. Mm. So to kind of put things to scale, mm. so this motorcycle factory running uh, at full speed yeah. produces a maximum of 8,000 motorcycles a year. Right. Right here at 8, on this site. Okay. Our parent company, TBS, yeah. produces uh, 13,000 a day. Wow. Crack it. Yeah. <laughs> 3 million a year. Bloody hell. So if we set off in a race to build the most motorcycles, yeah. by lunchtime on January the 1st, <laughs> they're winning. They're beating us. Yeah. Crack it. So that That's gives insane. you, a, and obviously one of the things they have is an enormous economy of scale. Yeah. The amount yeah. Of so that maybe that helps answer the question. Yeah, it must do. Yeah, lower numbers is always more as well. Yeah, economy yeah. of scale, of course. Yeah. yeah if you're producing ten thousand a day, then it's a bit different, isn't it? Right, right. <laughs> Crikey. And of course, the other thing as well, next to none of our uh, manufacturing process is mechanized. Right. It's, nearly it's all, all hand built. It's pretty yeah. much all hand built. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Adds to the price, yeah. And, it all, and little bits all add in. So, you know, yeah. if you do robotic welding, for instance, mm. you don't have to wait for the frame to cool down. Right. You can just, the, the robot can pick it up and move it. Yeah, yeah, like of course. Can't. You can't, yeah. So, lots of all yeah. like, little ways that you kind of don't really think of mm. all add up. What else happens in here, then? This is where everything gets polished. Brilliant. Oh, oh nice. Anthony must be at lunch. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, he might be, I tell you what, we'll come back once we've finished doing yeah. everything else. But this, yeah, is, this is the polishing room, so this is oh, where. Cool. So we have, yeah, there's a guy called Anthony and he does every bit of our polishing. Right, okay. So everything is, when I, like hand, you know, he uses a machine, but it's yeah. polished by hand. Yeah. Um, a V4 frame, for instance, which is completely polished front mm. to back, takes about six hours. Really? Wow. Yeah. And if you've never done it before, yeah. polishing is a real skill. It's really, it's really hard work for yeah. a start, but it is a real, real skill. So one slip and the part is ruined. Really? Yeah. Gosh. So, so Has that happened before? No, I mean, not with Anthony. No, yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the odd part. But yeah. For the most part, no. Oh, that's good. But you can also see. If I've you look been there, if you, look there, you can see the exhausts for oh, yeah. uh, oh, the wow. commando. So I, I won't go in, but I can just, I can bring you out a piece of plate steel. So those yeah. those exhausts arrive as plate steel. Okay. And they're rolled, welded, yeah. packed, polished. Every bit of the exhaust. Right, you know, is made here. I mean, we don't knit the wadding that goes in it, yeah, but yeah. within reason, every bit yeah. is not Again, none of that is outsourced, it's all handmade right now. It sounds blimmin' good as well. They sound amazing. Yeah, they sound yeah. really good. So one of the reasons it sounds so good yeah. is we are, we SVA our bikes, they're not right. like homologated. Yeah. So because yeah. we're a small unit manufacturer, we're given well, a yeah. special dispensation, basically. I thought so, yeah. And that's why our bikes sound as amazing as they do. Yeah. Well, here is here right in view, here is Anthony. <laughs> Perfect timing. So, he's going to do a bit of policy for us, isn't he? Excellent. He is yeah, also, well. as a lot of people here, a dead keen motorcyclist. But maybe he's not, maybe he's about to jump in to do something. <laughs> Let's see. The other part I have to remember when we do these things is, ultimately, this is a working factory. These guys have, yeah. have jobs to do and yeah, things course. that they each produce that isn't just entertaining me. Yeah. <laughs> You could just walk around and watch them every day, yeah. couldn't you? Oh. In three there, we also do um, an element of non-destructive testing. Mm. So uh, when frames are manufactured, they'll 
so there's like a, a simple check, like a, an obvious like visual check. Yeah. Um, and then there'll be ultrasound. There's also like crack testing. So there's a spray they can put on that can measure that there's no defects in the in the material of the weld, oh, like okay. ten millimeters. Yeah. Without physically cutting the frame up, okay. we do cut some frames up. Yeah. Uh, portion of a cut up again yeah. to make sure everything's exactly okay, as it yeah, should be yeah. okay. um, and then also in that um, metro room you saw there's a faro arm so they can bolt it down and then run that around it and make sure every single dimension so like a classic one to worry about would be like a shock mounting point yeah. on a v4 make sure that isn't left or right of where it should be yeah. and that yeah. can measure that against like known data right, okay. that's all non-destructive yeah um, do you have any sort of giveaway for Measurements or is it has to be exactly? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So if we take like a shock mount, yeah. So when we took over from Old Norton, we found their shock mounts were six millimeters either way. Really? Yeah. And we okay. up down from this house to be half a millimeter. Wow. Uh, yeah. Because at that point, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah that's, big difference. That's, that's, that's the good. Yeah. yeah. Huge difference. Wow. Attention to detail. <laughs> so this is the engine building room. Wow. Uh, so we can see some commando ones back to the natural silver finish. So it all starts here with the eco wave, which is basically a giant washing machine, pretty much. Yeah, so right, like okay. parts and cases go in there and they come out completely clean. Oh, and amazing. then the engine makes its way around here and has bearings pushed in, valve seats, valve guides, valve springs, every single bit of an engine. Yeah. So that basically by the time it hits the little line up there and comes out the back end, it's finished. the finished motorcycle. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the way it works is the whole, the whole bit is computer controlled. So the torque wrenches are all set by the computer and at each stage of the process, there's a, uh, you can see up there, it shows the operator what they're doing. So within reason, we could go in there, get one of those engine build trolleys and yeah. put together an engine. Really? Yeah. Gosh, I don't think I'd try that. I think I'd cock it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we will leave it to the experts, yeah. but theoretically that is the process. Oh, yeah. So okay. a TVS helped us produce that. And again, it's about it's about making sure that we minimize as many errors as possible. Yeah. The more simplistic you make for someone, the less room there is for the Yeah, of course. Oh, no, definitely. I must say, I love I love that engine. It's so characterful. The, yeah, the nice oh, and tonic. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great. I've got, a, yeah. I've got a nice and tonic to myself. Like, Have you? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I absolutely love it. I never, yeah. I never get over the noise and like yeah. third gear, we just crack it and oh, it rips. Amazing. It's fantastic. I love it. So let's head this way down to production. There, are, there is engines coming out of the engine build room. Right, okay. You can see. Yeah. They come along that where they're met with frames and start to become a complete motorcycle. Oh, amazing. And then, you know, so here there's like vent stamping takes place here. Yeah. Uh, but you can see, you know, tires, yeah. wheels, the commando frames. Incredible. And they go through this whole process and bit by bit, and they become yeah. complete motorcycles. Oh, okay. Have you Three been to a motorcycle factory of any variety before? No, it's the no. first one I've ever been to. Yeah, this I'm is, quite excited. Um, a lot more involved than most of the time. Yeah, I bet. Especially in the UK. So this is a testing and development workshop. Right, okay. So you are talking about design. Yeah. Any, any new products that need to go through like road testing, validation, whatever it is. Yeah. So in there. in there. Okay. Awesome. Look at that. It's intricate, isn't it? A bit of heavy metal while you build a motorbike. It's very fitting. <laughs> so, that, so we can see quite you can see the build trailer talked about those silver engines that are in there i assume must be for uh it could be for the limited edition so we're going through the first uh build build phase for the limited edition models at the moment right so we've already shipped some and or about to ship some i should say okay and there, there are a couple of energets they look really good those limited really editions classic, really nice. yeah. yeah it's even more special when you see the original one which i'll show you yes yeah. yeah but this is a hydraulic phase Right. So on the V4 it just does front and rear brake. Yeah. On the Commando it does clutch as well. Right. And okay. the way it works is the uh, that's computerized the little the arm of the hydraulic filler goes onto the little honey part, you know, the reservoir. Yeah. And the first thing it does is it draws a vacuum and see if it can hold a vacuum. Right. Assuming the vacuum holds, it will then fill it right, and okay. it doesn't mean there's no air bubbles in it. If it yeah. doesn't hold a vacuum, it will flag straight away. Right, okay. It will kind of fail the evaluation test yeah. and then the operator needs to go around it and find. So is, is something not tightened up properly? Yeah. Is there a problem with a part, a mass cylinder, yeah. something like that? And that means that it doesn't get to the point when you bled it, someone starts using it and it starts leaking fluid yeah. or you get an improper right, okay. feel of the caliper. Yeah. So and at each stage of the process, the vehicle is scanned, its job card is scanned, and that allows it to move on to the next computer, computer controlled 
start right. the process. So if, for instance, uh, let's say Friday afternoon the operator just wants to go home yeah. and, this, and there's a problem with that part. Let's say yeah. there's a, an issue with the part supplied to us and it fails the test. If yeah. the operator decided to try and override it and just fill it with fluid, yeah. you, know, you wouldn't do it anyway, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If that happened, <laughs> Right, okay. When it goes to the next bit or to the dyno, it flagged that it never passed this test. Right, okay. So it goes straight, yeah, it straight back. It minimizes any sort of issues is that before yeah. they get to the consumer. Have you ridden one of those? Yeah. What do you think? No, it's an animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in a really nice, it's really nice. I did a, I did a nice ride last year uh, where I took a couple of, they were, they were early prototypes actually. Right. Down to Charlie Borman. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he who's doing a podcast with some of his mm. friends. And we rode some through the roads of Surrey around here. And even though that's not, they were little tiny little country back roads. It's not yeah. kind of like where that, that bike is best used, you know, yeah. big flowing A roads. Sort of yes, yeah. Um, we had a, it was really great. You know, the roads were terrible, but the suspension stayed up. And good. the throttle is really progressive. So a lot of people worry with something that's got 185 brake quite a lot of torque, big, you know, a big 12 of the motor. Right. It's just going to be too much to handle, but not at all. The throttle is really progressive. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's only about as much as that you do. Yeah. Also, you know, that one's got, it's got flippers, riding modes, all the rest of it. So if it yeah. was in really, you know, in weather like you experienced today, you just put it in rain mode. Yeah, that okay. the yeah. whole bike yeah. Mm, Fair enough. So these are, these are limited edition ones, aren't they? Yeah, so it'll be missing, so it'll be waiting for parts. So yeah. that, that has progressed as far as it can. It looks like it's waiting for a, like a chain guard fuel tank and tow unit. Yeah. So yes, that's limited edition, which we'll be waiting okay. in from the supplier. I really like that one. The 588 is really yeah. popular. It's a really good color. Speaker. It's a good color. Okay. Dyno. Okay. Um, so every motorcycle before it goes through the line will go through the dyno. Oh, amazing. And uh, when you see them, basically the bikes are loaded on there, and it's a sort of it's a little bit of the sort of stuff you'd expect in MOT, so it's doing like brake tests. Yeah. And stuff. But the operator also runs it through the gearbox, does a power test, all that stuff. Yeah. So generally, well, I mean, right out there they come into life, but yeah. this is where a Norton press properly comes to life. Yeah. Right yeah. There. Is there any tolerance in the power? Is that always? There is. I don't know what it is off the top. Of yeah. From memory, I want to say it's five percent or ten percent. I can't. Right, remember. Okay. There is. A, there is like a um, what's the word? Like a standardised industry figure. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> forgot sorry. about that. Yeah. Also, if we <laughs> the other problem is when we see it end of line. Yeah. Um, obviously, Ray. If if, so, if someone like me comes along and scratches it with my watch, then yeah. Ray will then flag it. We need to replace the part. Right. Okay. Fair enough. So that's nice. It's a shame there's no bike to back to be loaded onto it. Yeah. See it. That would be cool. Yeah, so yeah. it runs all through the gears. And it just, it's to make sure the bike is performing exactly as it should be mm. before it gets to the point where, I mean, they go in a road test anyway as part of the yeah. PDI, but it's right, okay. just to make sure mm. that everything is as it should be yeah. before it gets yeah. to that point. Fair enough. Um, nice. I've never seen, people always ask about, like, does anything fail? I mean, theoretically, it could do it. I've never seen it happen. Right. And so if it was the sort of thing that would fail on the dyno, it would get flagged a long way before, long way before yeah. Yeah. yeah okay we didn't go in gear someone would notice yeah yeah <laughs> it was a part of missing yeah of course yeah. um okay. so if the bike passes it comes down into yeah here, which is maybe skip to the start which is end of line we've got two things here we've got end of line inspection yeah cqpo right end of line inspection is exactly what you it says in the tin so yeah. the bike goes into that tile and it's checked over is this motorcycle exactly as it should be? Yeah. Uh, is every part fitted? Is it fitted mm. correctly? Are there, there's no blemishes or marks in the paintwork, mm. anything like that kind of stuff. Okay. And then CQPA is, there's a chap called Ray, who is actually in there at the moment. He's yeah. doing end of line stuff. Right, and okay. Ray is sort of like the world's fussiest customer. Really? <laughs> and he's going through that bike, just, and he's not going, is this motorcycle exactly, he's, is this motorcycle as good as it possibly could be? Yeah, could yeah. we reroute this cabling a little bit better? Yeah. Could, we, could that zip tie, be terminated nicer, yeah. all that kind of stuff. He's going through it with the eye of the fussiest customer in the mm. world to make sure that every motorcycle is perfect. Well, that's the best way. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And Ray does Ray does fail products. That's yeah. his job. Yeah. You know, if, if he picked up nothing, I mean, yeah. it'd, be good, it'd be good on one hand, but it'd be a worry on the other. Yeah, yeah, of course. Acts, you know, accidents do happen. A classic example yeah. is, you, Ray's got them on, but he, they, they've got like bands to cover like belt buckles and things mm. like that to make sure there's no scratches. Obviously, idiots like me come along showing journalists around and just go, oh yeah, and then scratch <laughs> yeah. it, and then the part is spoiled, so it yeah. needs replacing, polishing, oh, reworking, okay. something like that. And then, once it's been to the end of line, it comes to here. Okay. And if there's any issues that, that Ray flags, it'll be yeah. flagged and it'll say, 
for instance, over there, awaiting rework. So there'll be something right, there. Okay. I don't know what it is. There might be a mark on the frame, a scratch, right. uh, a panel gap, something like that. Yeah. That's what our rework area is for over there. Okay. So if anything needs swapping, replacing, it gets done over there. Uh, once it goes from here, yeah. we've got an SVA station uh, just across the unit. Okay. Um, it goes there, it gets to SVA, it gets passed to sales, gets a number plate, yeah. and it goes to a very, very happy customer Brilliant. somewhere in the world. And it's very rare, it's, quite, it's very rare that you ever meet them, apart from like at events, but not, yeah. not at yeah. the factory. But seeing that, it's very rare that you see the moment that someone collects their motorcycles. You yeah. forget how exciting it is oh, to collect yeah. a motorcycle. So exciting. So it was really nice to see that chap in earlier collecting his V4, yeah. who was an MUL customer. So, you know, at one point you probably thought everything was lost. Yeah. So here he is. Oh, blimey, yeah. The day come, he's collecting his brand new V4 SV. Absolutely delighted with it, you know. Yeah. It's really nice. It's quite a rewarding moment. I bet, it? yeah. <laughs> and he's probably ended up with a better bike than he would have done if he... Oh, well, undoubtedly, yeah. yeah. So, any, so V4 SS owners that took delivery, we had a black and white with sort of a scrappage scheme. Yeah. Where they could bring those in and we'd exchange them for V4 SVs uh, with a bit of a contribution. And we have to crush those. They're completely really? unsafe. Really? Yeah. Gosh. No, nothing can be salvaged to that crush. Really? They're that bad? <laughs> Crikey! Oh dear. Oh, well, okay. This was Norton's first motorcycle. The Norton used a Clement engine. Yeah. Um, and this was, believe it or not, this was manufactured uh, less than 10 miles away from where we stood right now. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's how close the factory is to where Norton started. Unbelievable. So when did they start producing these? 1902. 1902. Yeah. Crikey. Until about 1906, I think, when the wow. Model 1 took over. Okay. Which was Norton's first motorcycle with their own engine. Right. Um, this was, this is basically, so it's, I think it's a hundred and, oh, I'm going to get the fact wrong. It's about 100, <laughs> 120 odd cc, maybe is maybe, right, okay. maybe 170 cc, I can't remember off the top yeah. of that. But a little single cylinder engine. Amazing. Um, it was very innovative at the time yeah. because it had a carburetor. Right, okay. Uh, up, up to then, they just used um, like what, evaporative carburetors, basically just a tray, almost like a tray of open fuel and it just sucked the fumes in. Amazing. Uh, it had a, a two-speed gearbox. <laughs> There, made by Sturmey Archer, who right, make little okay. bicycle gearboxes. Oh, amazing. And you pretty much need like three hands to operate it. Yeah. So your front brake is a little rod brake that just pushes right. on the tire like an original bicycle. Okay. That there is your spark advance. So you right. can manually adjust the spark timing. That's right, your okay. throttle there, basically. Blimey. And then that there, it doesn't have an oil pump. Right. That's your oil pump. My God. So you have to pressurize that and you would pump it and it pressurizes the system and then it slowly lets the oil drip through. Uh, one pump would last about 10 minutes. Really? And then you'd have to keep remembering to do that as you went along. Uh, it's, not, it's got no clutch of which to speak. Really. Right, okay. It's just the, this, the natural slip of this leather belt, because that's how it drives. You'd set off pedaling. Right. Um, and then when you were ready, you would basically smack it into first and that would bump start it. <laughs> Amazing. Off, really. oh, okay. Um, Crikey. The rear brake is this rod that presses right. in there and the lever just sits just inside that leather okay. belt there so you have to make sure you had your trousers tied up because otherwise it would catch it. Yeah, gosh. Um, yeah, it was good for about, uh, maximum. I think the maximum was about 20 miles an hour and it was good for, uh, I can't remember the range off the top of my head, but again about 20 or 30 miles, something like that. It was it was sort of like the electric bicycle of its day. Yeah. If, you know, if we think yeah. of how far you can ride an e-bicycle and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, at the yeah. time, Norton marketed it as being good for doctors. Uh, really? I have no idea why, unless they meant it was like good for doctors' business. Because yeah. people, but I suppose like okay. when this thing was invented, you'd probably drive from here to London and without seeing another vehicle on the road. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Crikey. So this is where it all starts with the Norton. Amazing. It's very impressive. As you can see, it's kind of like, it's not a bicycle frame. It looks a lot like it's purpose built, but yeah. it is basically a bicycle frame. Yeah, it's really yeah. it's strengthened. It's not just like a standard stock bicycle frame. Right, okay. And it's got like a, you know, it's a, it's a bit much like a seat tube angle got much longer seat stays yeah. and uh, chain stays to kind of okay. stretch it out. Oh, um, the saddle was supplied by Brooks, who are like a local bicycle saddle maker. They're still in operation now, and they're right. going to make this one. But believe it or not, really? uh, I won't do, for fear, <laughs> but I could theoretically ride off on this. Really? Yeah, Does it work? It's a runner. It's a runner. No way. It's a runner. Amazing. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this factory tour. I certainly have. That's the first motorcycle factory I've been around, and I must say it is mighty impressive. And as he was explaining on the tour, they are a very small company and they don't produce many bikes, only about 8,000 a year. Uh, whereas their partner company who own uh, the Norton brand, they produce about 13,000 bikes a day, which is unbelievable. So that's why this is such a small production bike. And that of course adds to the value of the bike because it's uh, a lower scale of economy 
and it's made in Britain and pretty much everything is handmade. So I hope this gives you a better insight into why these Nortons are the price they are and it kind of justifies it for me as to why they are that price and I do absolutely adore this bike I really really do so I'd love to have another one maybe even one on a long term um, I'd, I'd really happily ride one of these for a year and see how I got on with it but hope you've enjoyed it we'll see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one yeah yeah can I have some water <laughs>